Welcome to the Daring Living Podcast, where it's all about personal growth, honest conversations, and exploring what it means to live a passionate, daring life. I'm your host, Shirley Huang. Hello, friends. So I just celebrated my 25th birthday last week. And in celebration of it, I did a super long reflection of my past year. And I want to share some of these lessons with you today. It's already very interesting how I can see the big difference in my approach to how I am spending my birthdays now. (laughs) Whereas in the past, I would have wanted to make my birthday a big deal, invite all my friends and celebrate and party and have fun. Whereas now, it's definitely a lot more subtle. All I wanted to do on my birthday was to reflect and plan for my year ahead. And my friends kept on asking if I wanted to do something and I wanted to have dinner with people. It's crazy. All I wanted was to stay home. Ah, quarter life. I can feel already. I know I'm going to get a lot of bashing on this, saying that, oh, please, sure, you're still young. Enjoy your youth. <laughs> It's funny because I heard that once you turn 25, your years up to 30, it comes a lot faster. So yes, definitely need to treasure now as much as possible. So what's been going on for me over the past year? My past year, it hasn't been the easiest for sure, but it has been the most rewarding. Many of you probably know I started my business officially in June of this year. But even before that, I have already been pivoting around this idea of creating something for myself about a year ago. It was exactly this time of last year that I came into awareness that I actually wanted to start my own online business, but I was so afraid to go into it. So I dabbled in a couple of projects here and there. I freelanced for a while and then eventually I got certified in life coaching and finally ended my 9 to 5 job and committed to go all in on Darren Living full time. This really hasn't been the easiest decision for me. I learned a ton about myself, who I am, and really increased my skills and expertise for coaching and working with people over time. Here are five things I learned over the past year, and I think they would be super helpful for you too. The first lesson I learned is to rewrite your story in a way that serves you. It's interesting that a lot of us feel trapped and stuck because of our past experiences and what we have been through. But I want to let you know that your past actually doesn't exist anymore. Your past only exists as sentences in your head. There are things that you keep on telling yourself in your head. And this is where your past exists. Because of this, how you want to tell your story about your past, then is actually completely up to you. This is very true because if you have someone else look at your past and describe your past, that person would have probably see things differently as you and the story would have been completely different. In this way, if you think about it, then your past experiences is actually very fluid. There are the facts that happened, the neutral things that happened that have no emotion attached to it. And then there is the story that you're telling about your past. And this includes, you know, the adjectives, the emotions, and the subjective opinions and perspectives. Do you see what I'm saying? You can easily use your past against you. You can totally do that. What you can also do is to use your past as a reason to do what you want to do now and to be who you want to be now. And the best way, the best approach that you can go about this is to tell your story in a way that serves you right now. Because why not? You have the option. I know for me, when I first had the thought about starting my own business, I was super terrified and afraid that I was even thinking about this. The story I was telling myself was, 
who was I to start working for myself? I am only 24 years old. I never had any entrepreneurship experience before. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Who was I to do this? And I always quit when it gets hard. So that was the story I was telling about myself, about what I can and cannot do based on my past. But if I kept on telling that story about myself, I wouldn't even have started. Over time, I decided to write a new story. So now the story that I'm telling myself about my past was that all the things that I have been through, they were the things that are preparing me for this very moment right now to start my business. I had experience working in a startup company and I created my own marketing team in that company. I have plenty of experience working online and creating programs as a student and also the first few years after I graduated. I haven't started a business before yet. I haven't started a business yet. And that is exactly why I'm trying to get that experience now. This is the new story that I'm creating for myself. This is the new story I'm telling about my past. And that story serves me right now. If you are someone who haven't been in a long-term relationship before, for example, and the story that you are telling about your past is, I can never find love, no one wants me, it's hard for me to be in a long-term relationship. So if this is the story that you are telling about yourself, it's not going to serve you moving forward. What if the new story that you are telling yourself can be, The relationships I had in the past, they didn't work out. These people were not the right fit for me, but I learned a lot from these experiences. Because of these experiences, they helped me prepare to find the right person. I haven't found that person yet, so I'm going to keep looking until I do. Do you see how it is the same past? It is the same facts that happened, but you can tell it in a way that works for you. And this is your story, right? So you can tell it however you want. You really have a lot more power over yourself than you think. If you really are serious about rewriting your past in a way that serves you, I would recommend to you to actually like actually write them down in a notebook or something. And it will be interesting, actually, if you write them in two perspectives, right? So you can write your story that has led you exactly to where you are right now, the way you want it to be. And then you can write another story that led you to right now, how it is not serving you. And you can just compare these two stories. They will be completely different. And you will just see the power of of doing this. The second lesson that I really learned this past year is to keep on fighting for what you believe in. If there is something that you really care about, you have to go toward it with all that you've got. This is what fuels passion and keep it running. When you feel committed to something that really matters to you, whether it being a cause or an interest or an idea that you have, if it is something that is very important to you, you have to keep fighting for it because no one else is going to do it for you. When you are really committed, the failures and mistakes that you make along the way, they only serve as lessons, as redirections and readjustments. They do not mean the end because you are committed to the result. You're not committed to gaining the short-term pleasure and that's what you have to fight for. Over the past year, as I am starting my own coaching business to help people, I realized something. No one is going to want you to accomplish your dream more than you do. Even if you have people around you that are cheering for you, you know, maybe your friends or your parents or your partner, even if they are cheering for you, they are still not going to want it more than you do. So you have to step up. You have to be brave enough to speak it. If there is something in your heart that you really want to do, 
Maybe it is starting your own business, or go solo traveling, or move to a different country, or change your career, or maybe even going against what your family expect you to do. You have to be brave enough to stand up for yourself, because at the end of the day, no one is going to do that for you. If you are currently feeling stuck, or you don't know how to move forward, I want you to ask yourself this question again. <laughs> Are you really stuck? Do you really not know what you want to do? Because oftentimes, you do know. I find this in my clients as well. Oftentimes, you do know. You just need to call it for what it is and actually admit that. Looking back at the past year, I really don't think I would have had it go any other way. And this is when I know that I am on the right path. Okay. The third lesson that I learned this past year is that the most important relationship you can ever have is the relationship with yourself. You can be your biggest hype person, but also your biggest enemy. What you think in your head and what you say about yourself on a daily it matters a lot. And sometimes these thoughts that you are thinking in your head, sometimes they're not always harsh. You know, that's why it's very hard for you to bring them into awareness and to notice them. Sometimes, they can come in a very sneaky, subtle way, almost like a self pity. And that way of thinking, it puts you as the victim, almost like. A matter of fact. Oh, it is just what it is, and you give up, and you can't do anything about it. This pattern of thinking is simply not helpful for you at all. So you really have to clean that stuff up. You have to clean up your mind. What I learned over the past year is that whenever I put myself as the victim or be in self pity, I am not doing anything about it because self pity creates inaction. This way of thinking it makes it makes you feel defeated, and then you start putting yourself down, and then you decide that it is just what it is. You can't do anything about it. This is why at my work, I also work with my clients a lot on processing and being aware of your thoughts. You have to train yourself to think differently and look at things from a different perspective. It's like exercising. It is a consistent practice to stay mentally fit. If you do not clean up your mind after a while, these old thought patterns will come back, and it will be a lot harder for you to notice them. In order to have a good relationship with yourself, you need to go within and decide intentionally to take care of yourself mentally and emotionally. This is where. Transformation happens. If you want to learn more about what transformation is and what does it mean to go through a transformation, I did a episode on this. I believe it's episode ten. So make sure you go back and listen to that episode if you haven't already. The fourth lesson I learned over the past year is this: having a healthy diet. It is in your lifestyle. Over the past year. I learned that having a healthy diet, it is in your consumption. It is in your daily consumption, and consumption does not just come from what you eat. It also comes from everything that you consume day to day. Yes, it is about the type of food you eat, but it's also about the information that you tune into. It is the tips and opinions that you listen to. It is the type of conversations that you have, and also the type of content that you look at on social media. These are the things that you consume on a daily basis. It is a lifestyle, and to have a healthy lifestyle is to intentionally decide what you want to consume instead of letting yourself absorb things randomly. I have experienced how having a healthy diet in my life. In all areas in my life, it has lifted me up. It has make me, it made me happier and more like myself. 
I have also experienced the opposite, where I fall into the loop of self comparison, eating food that I actually don't want to eat, scrolling through the feed aimlessly and purposeless, purposelessly, <laughs> not really thinking much about how I plan ahead and how I want to spend my time. That was a very scary time for me. And one action actually all, in a way, affect one another. So what I am saying is, every action that you make on the daily over time, they can really build up and create impactful results. Small things that you do daily matters, whether it is positively or negatively. Whether it is maybe choosing to wake up thirty minutes earlier to do yoga before you head to work, or choosing to read ten pages of a book instead of scrolling on social media. Don't underestimate these everyday actions and everyday decisions. And also, if you are fighting for a cause that you really care about, then you should really dedicate a majority of your time on it because that's how you make it a priority. One book that I would really recommend on this topic about daily actions and how to reach success in your life is called *The Slight Edge* by Jeff Olson. It is a really great book. Highly recommend. Okay, the fifth lesson I learned is your journey is your journey alone. You cannot compare with anyone else. We are all on different paths, and everyone starts off at different stages. Comparing yourself and where you are in your life with someone else's life and someone else's path, it really just will not do you any good. I like to use the example of driving on a highway. You are driving in your lane in your car on a highway. You will see other people driving in their lanes too, and the truth is, we are all going to different locations. Some people will exit sooner than you. Some people will exit later. Some will drive faster and be ahead of you, and some will be behind you. And your job is not to look around at what all these people are doing and where they are going. Your job is to stay in your lane and not look around and and compare yourself with other people. And I get it. I do this too. Whenever I find myself comparing myself with someone on social media, for example, then I would simply notice that, bring that into awareness, and then decide to think about something else instead. So my new thought would be: instead of thinking I feel left behind, I feel so behind, I would change my thought and think: what this person is doing has nothing to do with me. I also want to point out something about taking people's advice. Take people's advice as opinions. <laughs> really, you can listen to them. It's fine because they can voice whatever it is that they want to say. They have the right to do that. But at the end of the day, it is still your decision, and you can decide how you want to go forward with your path. And you can decide if you want to take their advice in or not. The final lesson that I want to share with you is: you are so much stronger than you think you are. Don't underestimate yourself. We humans are capable of so much, and often we let our fears hold us back from doing what we actually want to do. Over the past year, what I realized is that the more I challenge myself, the more stronger mentally and emotionally I become. If you look back at where you were five years ago, would you have imagined that you would be at right now in your life? You have been through so much, and you have grown so much. I'm sure that I'm not the only one who have thought about this, and this is called growing pain. We all have been frustrated, anxious, worried, heartbroken, sitting through discomfort, sitting through disappointment, experiencing failures, regrets. And mistakes to be where we are today. And looking back, I can say that my personal experiences that I have been through, they only made me stronger, and they only made me more sure of who I am, the type of person I want to be, and what I want for myself. I have also seen a lot of my clients being tested as well, and so many times, even at rock 
bottom. They only get up from there and become stronger from there. The ability to embrace our discomfort and sit and experience pain and go through it to grow is a beautiful human experience. This is what makes us human, the ability to feel whether it is negative or positive. And if you are listening to this, I want to let you know that you too are so much stronger than you think you are. So always remember that. And that is it for today, six lessons that I learned over my past year. I hope you find them helpful. Let me give you a recap. Lesson one, rewrite your story in a way that serves you. Lesson two, keep fighting for what you believe in. The most important relationship you can ever have is your relationship with yourself. Having a healthy diet is in your lifestyle. Your journey is your journey alone. You cannot compare that with anyone else. You are so much stronger than you think you are. Take care, everyone. I'll talk to you next week. Hey, if you like what you heard so far and you really want to take this work deeper, I would like to invite you to apply to my one-on-one coaching program, Three Month Transformation. This is where we take everything that you are learning on this show to the next level and really guide you through to apply them into your life so you can work through your goals and become the person that you want to be. To learn more, visit my page at daringliving.com forward slash coaching. Again, that is daringliving.com forward slash coaching. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love it so much if you can head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a rating and review. It means so much to me, more than you know. Thank you all for listening, and I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.